Howdy folks, Kevin here. Uh, if you're wondering why I have this green thing behind me, it's actually a blanket and it helps deaden the sound in the room because it's kind of a small room and it gets some echoes in it. And I am just too lazy to get up and take it down just to record this intro, so I'm gonna leave it up. But uh, anyway, this is the second video of three on three different tip you know, on three different tips you can use in your testing. In the previous video, we covered filtering and how you can use uh, a couple different methods to filter out empty text. In this one, we are going to cover um, how to handle multiple credentials in different test environments. And you can kind of use that for different things, um, if not just credentials, but uh, I don't know, different servers and uh, different data. Like if you have different data and you need to access that data, depending on the different environment, you can use the same idea. And I'm just going to show the general idea. So let's get into it. So I'll come back in here and I'm going to create a new test file. And inside that, I'm going to write my describe blocks. And then just like in the previous video, I'm going to use my browser URL to go to the right URL. And then I'm going to inspect these elements and get the selectors for them. So I've got an ID of username, I'll key off of that. And I'll set the value in there to Mr. Tom Smith. And then I'll do the same thing for the password. Again, it has an ID, so I'll use that. And I'll just duplicate that line, paste that in, and then pass in my super secret password. Now I will click the login button. I need to get the selector for that. And I will just use the text login. So that'll be a button. And I'll use star equals to say anything that has login inside of it. This is the only button on the page that has login, so I can just use that. And I will send the click command. And then I will, I don't know, let's see, what do I wanna do? Tom Smith, super secret password, login. Welcome to secure area. We'll just log out that it has the, the URL. Normally I would do an assertion here like expect browser.get URL to contain secure, but I'm feeling extra lazy today, so I'm not going to do this. I am going to run this script to make sure everything worked as expected. So I'll come back in here and run npx wdio, and I am going to pass in a command line argument of spec to run only this creds.js file. Um, I don't want it running. Oh, I don't need the double dash. I'm used to npm test instead of uh, npx. So uh, when you run it through npm test, you have to pass it through the script. When you're running it through npx, you're not passing it through npm scripts. So you don't use two, the extra two dashes. Anyway, um, you see my URL is correct there as I was hoping it would be. Okay, so this is a pretty basic login example. And uh, in the real world though, you're probably gonna have like a test site. So we'd have like test Heroku app or test the internet or something like that. And in that instance, you probably don't have this Tom Smith account on there. You probably have some sort of test account on there. So how do we update our test to handle multiple ones? So there's two things we need to update here. We need to go to the test URL instead of the production URL. And then the values that we have uh, in the input need to change as well. So let's get into how to work through that. Now, normally, and I mentioned this in the previous video, normally I keep this in my configuration file. And I'm actually gonna do that for this example. This is gonna be the only one that has that URL in the configuration file. So I will get rid of that base URL and replace it with dot slash to say whatever the base URL is plus uh, this login page. And I'll save that. I'm gonna jump back over to my configuration file and scroll up to the top. And in here, maybe not all the way to the top, I have a base URL value. So I could set that to this internet site. But what I really want to do is set this depending on some uh, switch, some command line switch saying, should I test production server or should I test the test server? So I'm gonna take that out and delete that. And I'm going to just do this little trick thing here that says if base URL, um, it's gonna get the base URL that's already defined as a variable or a constant, whatever we wanna use. And we might wanna use um, something that can let us change it. This might make a little bit more sense. I hope it does in just a second, but this is how we're gonna define our base URL by just saying base URL. And it's going to imply that you wanted to use the local base URL variable for this value. So I'll go back up to the top for real this time. 
and I am going to define that base URL value. So I'll say let base URL. And I said uh, I might want to use a constant for this, but uh, I could see this base URL changing a fair amount depending on different circumstances. So I'm going to say let. And I'm going to define it as uh, the internet.herokuapp.com. And this would work for our production site as it is. But what happens when we want to use the test site? Well, this is the method I use. There's a ton of different methods for doing it, but I hook into process.env and let me look up some documentation on that real quick. Okay, so I pulled up the node documentation on it and basically it returns an object containing the user environment. The user environment are all those environment variables that you have defined. So if I jump back into my command line and I do something like echo, dollar sign shell, you can see it returns a value. So this is a value that's stored in this environment variable on my command line or in my environment. So if I came in here and I did console.log process.env shell, this would actually log out this same value. So it kind of has that same thing. Now we can also define new environment variables, which I've done for things like debugging. Um, I say like debug equals true. And we could do something like use prod is equal to true. So if I did uh, use prod, that would return the value of whatever this variable is. So when I run my test, instead of just doing npx wdio specs, I can come to the beginning. And this is in Linux type systems. Uh, and on Windows, it's a little bit different. So pay attention to that. But I'm just going to cover what it's like on um, a Mac or a Linux. You can do use prod equals true. And this will set a one-time environment variable that gets passed into our script with this value. And uh, it's used for that. And then if you were to run just npx wdio again next time, it's not going to have that value. Um, it would be something else. Or it would, it would basically be false. OK, so to use this in our script, we're going to take that and we're going to say if that does not equal true, then we'll redefine that base URL to be whatever the test is. So I'll just do the test internet. So let's say that's the URL to our testing server. Or I could actually do something like if I had a local host, I could do local host as well. And then this will change that base URL value to this new value and we'll pass it into our configuration and it will use that. So if I were to save this and run my credentials again, and I don't pass in use prod equals true, so I just leave it as there. It doesn't have that environment variable. It's going to run through this check. This is not going to equal true. So it's going to give me an error because it tried to load. Let's see where it is. It tried to load the test internet .heroku app, and that page does not exist on the internet. And so it gave me an error. Basically, can't find anything on the page because the page just didn't load. But if I were to use use prod equals true and then run it again, it's going to run through the whole script successfully because it uh, didn't go into this conditional. It, it stuck with this original one. Now, this is a little bit verbose. We can actually reduce this down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is move this and we're going to do a ternary statement not tertiary which is how i mess up it up all the time but i'm going to say if use prod is equal to true then i want to use the production url if not i'm going to move this around i'm going to say otherwise use the test one and we can actually format this to be a little bit nicer. Yeah, we can format it like that. And uh, that might be a little bit easier to read. I don't know. It depends on how you want to format it. But if we come back in and we run it, it should not throw any syntax errors. I'm hoping it, it won't. That's why I'm running it again, just to make sure it doesn't throw any syntax errors. Cool, that seemed to work. So basically, it says if you have used prod is equal to true, use the first value. Otherwise, use the test value. And you can get even more complicated if you have like local. You could say use underscore local is equal to true. And uh, it would use your local server you want there. Now, that is the start of it. But what happens when we need uh, to set the credentials? So now I've got this part figured out. I need different credentials. 
So I'm going to use that same idea. I'm going to come up to the top of my file, and I'm going to say let credentials equal, and I'm going to do uh, my normal, so user of Tom Smith, and then my password. And then I can come into this set value and say creds.user and creds.password. And now it will use these credentials that I've stored in this object. I can say if my environment is a production, then use the credentials, or sorry, if it's not production, then use these alternative credentials. So let's type that out. And one thing I didn't do right here is I will actually want these as my production credentials to be inside of here. And then these are going to be like my test credentials. So I'll just come up with a completely random set of credentials. So if it's not production, it's going to use these credentials. If it is production, so if use prod is set to true, then it's going to overwrite those credentials with a new set of credentials, and those are going to get passed in to my script itself. Let's go ahead and run that just to make sure everything works. And you can see this can kind of vary whether you do use prod or use test or use local, which one you default to. In this example, I'm defaulting to uh, running on the test environment but you might want to default to run in the production environment. It just kind of depends. But hey, my test passed and that's great. Now, you're going to want to do this probably in multiple tests. So let's move these credentials outside into a new file. So I'm going to copy this out or rather cut it out. And then I'm going to create a new file, paste that in. And this is going to use nodes module export syntax to export out these credentials. So now this file, whenever you run this file, it's going to give you either the test credentials or the production credentials, depending on this environment value. So I'm going to save that up in my test folder. I'll call it, uh, I'll create a new folder called config. I could also call it utils or something, and I'll just name it credentials. Then in my test, I need to load those credentials. So I'll say constant creds is equal to require. And I need to go up a directory because I'm inside of the specs folder. Then I need to go into my config directory. Then I need to get the credentials file. And so this is going to be an object that we can use user and password. And that will work. Let's try that out. And it logged us in correctly. One new thing that we can do in JavaScript is called um, object destructuring, I believe. I may have gotten that wrong. I'm a little too lazy to look that up right now. But the basic idea is because this has, because we want the user and password and the value returned is just an object, we can use this fancy format of getting rid of creds and just saying, I want the user property and the password property off of the object returned from here then I can get rid of that. And I'm just setting the user and password. It's just a little bit cleaner overall because you don't have this extra creds uh, object out there that you're using. You're just defining your user and password. I'm going to give that one more run just to make sure everything's right and I'm not lying to you about any of this. And it ran, so that's great. Uh, passed in the user and value, so that's perfect. So here's the credentials file. You could add another conditional in here. So if lo uh, use local is equal to true, then you would use a different set of credentials and it all gets passed in. So that is how you can manage different credentials. Uh, and I also mentioned if you have like different data sets. So on one in test environment, you have one set of data that you have just there. And then on another one, you have another set of data. You can say my data and then define what that data should be. So that will end this second tip. The third tip it will be coming to you in the next video where I talk about scrolling inside of elements, which is a somewhat tricky thing to do, um, but I've got a pretty standard way of handling it. So until next time, have fun testing.